<laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> so, yeah. Today we're doing our first podcast. <sighs> yeah. For better or for worse, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. And there's the setup right here. Yeah. Ben, please go over the setup. Uh, okay. Uh, what we have here is a very basic intro podcast setup. Um, two uh, condenser style microphones. Um, we have a Focusrite audio interface. Um, this is a headphone amp and splitter for independent headphone monitoring, which may or may not be useful. I don't know. And then we're just running it into a laptop running uh, Audition, mm -hmm. Adobe Audition we'll be using today. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I, we'll see how the whole system works. I fully anticipate it will be um, trial and error. Yeah. Um, and the quality will be, you know, we'll see how it goes. Oops. Be like here. Yes. So I'll be right back. i go outside and get Ben's here, talking into the mic. Can easily see it. Hey, Dad. Let's go this side. Can you see me? Barely. Better. Talking into this mic. So, yeah. How's it going? Should we worry about our lapel? I don't think so. I don't know how to get that into my system unless yeah. you want to record it on something else. Yeah, right. It won't go. It'd have to be a separate thing. Yeah, I've okay. got only two in. Oh, actually, that's not true. No, that is true. Two ins. And we have those, uh, both those. That's yours. Sweet. Go for it. And, um,. Yeah, trying to see if there is two, 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 two. Is there is there like a left and right thing going on? I don't here? think so. Probably but not, I right? definitely yeah, I don't I don't think so. What's the that's the range here? I can hear you great, but I think you should be up on it as just, much as possible. Right on it. I mean <laughs> I, I think that's really how it's supposed to be. That's why that microphone stand is not ideal because uh -huh. this one puts it like right in my grill, you know? Yeah. It's like I can right in my grill yeah well look at that well, we can see each other too yeah exactly it looks like i have to Oof, man the brutal truth what's oh. up guys <laughs> <laughs> that's where we'll have to be you yeah. know wearing let's hold this a little bit that way yeah I, we can see your face uh, yeah iPhone. the like stripes you can see my face on my on your iphone <laughs> we got two set up on the corner here yeah 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 and then uh the canon as the main one yeah, so this sweet. is it. That's my first time um, ever podcasting, yeah. ever, or recording in this capacity. This um, is fun. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little daunting. Um, I've done a lot of recording on with uh, playing with bands over the years, but I've never mm. just sat down and like just straight up recorded. Just and, voice. Yeah, just voice, and it's <gasps> intimate, like all up in your head, you know. Yeah, it's the headphones. It really makes yeah. Your, I mean, this is my first time anything close to this. So all right, <laughs> this is. Uh, it's, yeah, it's good. I hope we have. Um, I hope we have interesting enough stuff to say <laughs> under these under these conditions. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't really have an agenda here. Uh, it's really about figuring this out, right? We're trying to figure mm -hmm. out what why we're doing this, what this is all about. Um, yeah. We're going to like take this weed filled path together and mat down the grass as uh, as best we can, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's it's all about documenting. Right. Our process. You know, there's the first one. Right. And. Right. We just got to go from there, right? So right. We got to totally. start somewhere. That's a great segue. Um, as I think that it make it might make the most sense then to um, to maybe talk about why we're doing this in the first place, mm. and then like what what brought us even to this table. Because I, I don't know, um, it's we're taking this for granted already. But the listeners, if there's any ever listeners listening to this, um, <laughs> in the future, they will eventually, right? <laughs> um, they won't know why we're doing this or what our history is or our background. So we should right. probably start there, right? Yeah. So. My whole, I guess, uh, goal with this whole thing is to share the understanding of what the design process is to regular people. I know, I mean, it's it's very known in the design world, and designers use it, but um, it's one of those things where most people don't know what design is, right. or like what it actually means. Right. And... The goal with this podcast is to kind of talk through all those little details and mm -hmm. explain 
uh, what each of the parts of the process is and how you can use that to solve problems as we do as designers. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and not just problems, design problems for, say, building something, but problems that exist right. maybe in your life or yeah. things you're grappling with, that kind of thing too, right? Right. So one of the biggest things we get, the question that we get asked is, what is design, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it, it's one of those I don't even, I don't unicorn know. answers where yeah. it's like you can't really explain it. Right. Um, and, yeah, almost everybody has a different definition. And, yeah, this is something that I've been thinking about quite a bit. And, you know, the the common definition is like a design is taking an idea, creating an object, and making it manufacturable for the mass. That's the most common basic sure. definition of what design is. Sure. Um, and it's and there's like a lot of things that kind of relate to products and designing a product for mass production yeah. material but, objects essentially right yeah and the process of doing it but it doesn't quite encompass the true meaning of design with just that one right. uh, aspect of it right and well, that's the very surface level right that's, that's like, the surface level right I mean, and um there's a lot more to it than there's that. a lot more to it so to me design is more of a mindset that we have as designers um and the mindset is problem solving. Yes. Being able to look at a problem, figure out why this is a problem, and how we go about solving it. Right. And with that mindset, you know, you can almost approach any problem in your life, uh, whether it's like health, mm -hmm. whether it's career, mm -hmm. and take that same design processes that we use for products and apply it to everyday life. Yeah, that was one of the most interesting things that I discovered when uh, when starting to study design from this um, direction was how much um, how much of these principles apply to mm -hmm. to other principles. I think you figure that out a lot of times when you learn anything. Um, how much crossover there is between learning one thing and then learning another thing. There's um, overlapping sections with almost any skill set, right? Yeah. Um, but I was struck by how how much design thinking, which I that term is a little a little overused. <laughs> Uh, how much design thinking is really useful, I think, as a component of uh, building a healthy, a healthy life. Um, yeah. Which is not to say that I have figured it out or that I am, um, you know. Uh, it, yeah, you know, it's no matter what, it's a process. I think that should be said, yeah, yeah at the onset that uh, I, I don't have a, all of the answers to these problems. And yeah. I think part of this process for me, too, is about figuring out, you know, how to better improve my situation, too, and to ch to overcome challenges that I have and overcome obstacles and to become a stronger, better, more competent, well-informed, complete person mm -hmm. you know, on this planet, which I think is, is really important. Yeah. I mean, this it, the design mindset is, um, it's almost like it, it's not just solving a problem, but it's continually reflecting on what's happening mm -hmm. and then trying to improve it. Like it doesn't have to be a problem, but if, if you feel like maybe this could be better, it's the same thing. Like, yeah, you figure out what can actually be improved and then apply those and implement those to make it a little better. Right. By doing, you know, research and introspection mm -hmm. and um, some deep thinking about problems. I mean, what, what what other ways do you approach that problem? Like, what's the how do, how do you get started in that process? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So the, the basic design process is observe, uh, which is, you know, looking at what's going on, like. And looking at it objectively, uh, without like you know personal feelings or anything like that. <laughs> is, that is that even possible? Yeah. Well, I mean, like you, you kind of. You, well, you I'm kinda, half joking because that's really hard. <laughs> no, for I know. Me. <laughs> that's it's hard for me to do that. Right. I mean, it's hard for anybody. But right. as designer, designers, you know, you can't take things personally. Like critiquing. Yeah. Like you should be the hardest critique of yourself when you when it comes to design. So when right. others like give an opinion you're not like offended by it or it's like, right. I already thought about that, you know? Yeah. So yeah. So being able to like take yourself out of it and approach a, a problem from an outside perspective and to try to really get to the core. Um, so being able to observe your problems from a distance and figure it out that way. And then of course it's uh, the next step is ideating or brainstorming the d different possibilities that you can uh, solve this problem. And here is where you get like as crazy as you want, you know. It's right. Like, I choose real crazy. Yeah. That's so how, that's how crazy I want. 
maybe your your problem is like I feel stagnant in my life. Right. And the crazy thing is, be like, let's go skydiving. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> really, like boost your yeah you yeah know, craziness level. Um, yeah, that's an interesting point. It could be something as mundane as cleaning the dishes too. Yeah. Which is interesting to me. Yeah. But I like. I like how little things can impact the process also. It doesn't always have to be, you know, mm-hmm. like I went bungee jumping for the first time on, oh, yeah. on, on that note um, a few years ago. Yeah, Ooh. it was, yeah. <laughs> I've um, done that before. I think, I think I'm good. I think, <laughs> I think, I think I've, I've checked that off the list. I, I, you know, I was really, really about experiencing new things, but also about, um, you know, finding those things and maybe just not doing them anymore if um, I, don't, <laughs> if yeah. I don't feel like doing them. Uh, anyway, I was a t- tangent. No, no. Uh, oh, man, bungee jumping. For yeah. A. Up in Washington. There's yeah, a, there's like Amboy. S- I don't, Amboy, Washington? I don't know. I don't, I don't, it's like a tall bridge going down into a creek. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that where you did it? Uh-huh. Oh, man. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, it's a pretty awesome. It's like oh. a 250, 220-foot gorge. Yeah. I mean, it's a serious drop. They, they say it's like one of the highest That's in what they America say. or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's insane, though. Oh, my God. And the funny thing was that they don't even give you, like, a chance to back out. Like, once you're once you're standing uh, on that platform, uh, they're like, one, two, and, the, and go. And, like, <laughs> I was standing up there like, you know, maybe this isn't such a good idea. <laughs> Like it was, it was that they know that you're gonna back. Like they yeah, can, you so can you, tell. Yeah, once you go on the edge, you're like, like you're committed. If you hesitate, you're not. Going. You're not going. You're not going. Because no self, no uh, reasonably intelligent human being would ever look down at the insane drop yeah. and decide to jump off the bridge. I mean, it's yeah. No, you, you're basically falling to your death. To your death. Multiple times. Yeah. Over like, and over once again. Once you hit the coil, yeah. <laughs> once you hit the bottom, you know, it, you get sprung back up. Exactly. That's one thing I didn't uh, take into. Effect. Oh yeah. When the, I the was, second jump, like the yeah, second second drop. Yeah, yeah. And the third drop and the fourth and drop. They just get like yeah, incrementally shorter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my the, god. Yeah. The first one is definitely like oh shit. Yeah. And then the second was like oh again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And again. And then yeah. it's sort of fun. And then the swing, like then you're just swinging on the rope, you know, mm-hmm. which is super dope. I, I, yeah. I did like the swing part, but and then you jump backwards after that. Yeah. The falling. Yeah. Oh, I didn't do that. No. No. no? no, no just no. once. I just did once. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I know. You know. I know. I know. It was really a difficult decision, sort of, because I, I was like, but I was really not. I mean, I was cool with the first one, but I felt like, you know, I had sat, I'd scratched the itch for my, and crossed it off the list, and I just didn't, I didn't. <laughs> nice. There's also yeah. some overlying anxiety problems at that time, so like, I was having like, I was a little stressed out about the whole thing, and yeah, I was, it was good though. And I watched, I watched all my family members do it, and that was almost as much yeah, of a reward that, as anything else. Yeah, you kind of get some like assurance that you see like so many people in front of you go, yeah, and survive, yeah. He's like, all right, I should be fine. Yeah, I think everybody <laughs> should do it. I think everybody should do it once, one time, just to try it because yeah. it's cool. Have you skydived too? Not yet. No, I've done the indoor skydiving. Oh, really? The yeah. one up in? Um, yeah, the iFly. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, how was that? It's very easy. Yeah. Yeah. You just like lay so, like, Yeah, right. And... All you have to do is just like lay and it just blows the guys you up like in the stay air. relaxed, and then you just like slightly position your arms. Yeah. To uh, like change direction. Yeah. And. Uh, there's the guy, the, the teacher there, um, is in the fan with you. And he's holding you, so he's like basically got full control of you. Okay. So you're, are you ever f- totally free, f- like free fly? If, if you're able to stay in control, I see. then the, the teacher will let you go. And they what they like rate you, like just give you like the okay no. once you like, they just look at you and say okay you're under control now. Now here's here you go. Or like how do they how do you get to that point? Well, it's kind of like uh, like. Uh, you letting go of the handlebars on a bike. Mm. So it's like, they'll just let you go for a little bit and then grab you again. I see. And How high let... are you off the ground? I mean... Oh, it's it's probably like four or five feet. Oh, okay. So not yeah. you're not like 20, 30 so feet like, in there. Yeah, the guy's standing in there. Oh, all right. Um, that sounds less dramatic. Yeah, that is very... It wasn't as dramatic as I imagined. <laughs> it wasn't as hard as I imagined. Yeah. Um, so you don't like jump not... into the fan. Like you just, you're laying down first and then you kind of get blown up in the air. Is that sort of how it works? You you start off in the the doorway and you put your hands up like that and you just oh forward. just fall down yeah. yeah that makes more sense and then the, the guy takes you and, yeah but it's a lot of fun nice yeah we don't need to talk about that anymore if you don't want um, yeah I'm so, just curious going back to the design process <laughs> <laughs> it's a good tangent but uh, so after that is testing right so we went from observe ideate right test I believe and th- this system is kind of going off of ideo. Uh, right. is, uh, four, four main design processes. So testing is basically a, about, you know, once you got your brainstorming and your possibility to right. implement on a problem, 
and you go out there and test it. Like right. if you're approaching health, like trying different diets or yeah. doing different exercises right. and finding the one that you enjoy the most. Yeah. You know, that's key. It's key. Enjoyment is key in that process for sure. Yeah. Or right. in, in exercise part at least. And I think a lot of people get caught up on the whole like brainstorming section right. and don't move on to testing. Right. Um, where does research um, fall in that step process for you? Uh, that'll be in uh, ideation. In the ideation phase, yeah. observe and ideation. Because I've heard different, I've heard different things, and I've seen different processes where the research phase its own separate phase before ideation really is even on the table. Yeah, which the, is the hardest thing for me to do as a designer. Right, is not ideate because that's what my brain wants to do automatically all the time is come up with solutions like based right, on my assumptions, right, right. which are almost always wrong, you mm-hmm. know. And then there's so going back to the drawing board and starting from a research base is one of the things that I, I really try to um, I try to do more now just because I know that it's for not sure. like it's not really intuitive for me to start that way. Yeah. No, I mean, and the, and the beauty of the design process is everybody has their own right. different loop. Right. You know, I kind of go everywhere. Oops. Right. <laughs> kind of go everywhere. So like, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, observe, do some research, you know, and then start moving into brainstorming. Right. Maybe I come up with an idea that's a little bit different. So I go back to research. Yeah, that's a good point. And then come back to test it, you know. Yeah. So you should be able to flip-flop from different. Um, yeah, to go back to different processes. phases at, at will without. Right. You know, like you're not just right. done with one phase and then that's yeah. it. You, can you never shouldn't have to it be again. like in a regiment. Like I, I finished this part. I got to go to the next one. Right. And then once I finish that one, go to the next one. Right. No, it's it, it's it very flexible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because you come across like you come across diverse and unexpected problems all the time mm-hmm. too then, right? So like a lot yeah. of times in ideation phase, you'll come across, or even in the testing phase especially, you'll come across a problem that might force you to go back to yeah. the drawing board, right. which is always the worst. <laughs> when you feel you like- You have a deadline, yes. <laughs> yes, when you're in school and it's due in a week, that is definitely the worst. Yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's hard anyway. I think that I get, I get real committed to something too. Like, like I get real committed to like the emotions behind a design solution. And then uh-huh. when you're forced to come up with that, come to the conclusion that uh, this is not the right way to go. Yeah. And you've got to kind of like- Yeah, pivot. Di- yeah, well, yeah, pivot. Oh, the dreaded pivot. <laughs> That's the night, yeah. Abandon your child is what, <laughs> like something yeah. that you care so deeply All for. you put into it and it's just yeah. like, it's oh, not going to work. It's not going to work. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That is, I don't think any designer, um, I think the sooner you can become comfortable with burning your house down, um, to use a very dramatic metaphor, mm-hmm. um, or abandoning something that you yeah. care deeply about, the better. Yeah. And that, that's where the testing phase is really important. Yeah. And in that phase, you just gotta, you know, try everything and fail as many times as you can until you find that success. Yeah. Failure is key. Yeah. That's the one thing that school doesn't really address. And then we, could, we can talk about school and then mm-hmm. uh, whatever. Oh, but it's a whole other situation. Because <laughs> um, we're, yes. That might be a, new, a different podcast now. <laughs> that might be a different podcast. I know if the listeners don't know this, if there's any listeners at all, um, which we'll just assume there's at least one. So I'm talking to you, that one person. Um, I, both Alex and I are we're in school at, at later ages and we have plenty yeah. of opinions on how the school system, <laughs> how the higher education system works, but we can talk about that later uh-huh. uh, or not at yeah. all. No, I have a lot to say about that. I but. do too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I forget what the, what the overlap what was the point <laughs> of that. Now I'm testing. thinking about school. Yeah. Testing and, and failing, a lot. failing yeah. a lot. That's the thing that school does not do well, especially on the 10 week term is oh, give man. you the opportunity to fall flat on your face and then, have a system of repair protocols in place for when you do fall on your face so that you're learning the whole time. It's kind of like if you don't get it right the first time, like you're, there's not a really a reward for um, trying really interesting things. I mean, in some instances there might be, but I think it, it, it also has to do with the mindset that students have. That's a good point. You know, they're used to the whole regimented curriculum based, like well, grades submit this too. paperwork at this right. day kind of thing. Um, and you just get graded on that. Right. Instead of word design, it's like present your best work, no matter how much work it takes. The final pro- the, the project is your final grade kind right. of thing. And I think they get caught up. It's like, well, I did 10 models. Even right. though it's crap, I did 10 models. Right. Like, and that's a problem with, I think, schooling in general. Yeah. Has trained students to be task doers and not problem solvers, sort of, because um, they're just given a list. And you see it in right. every phase of academia. Mm-hmm. You see... Um, People just want to know which items to study for the test. You know, they're not interested in the course material. Right. They right. just want the list of keywords or not, so on. Right. You know what I mean? They they rely on somebody else to give them what they should learn. Right. 
Right. And I feel it in myself too, which is obviously like it's in there. It's in me as well. Like I feel mm-hmm. when things get, when it gets hard in a class or when you're trying to learn something and it's, you, you know, you're forced to then use your intuition and your problem, you know, to, to dig down into a problem and extract the real information without being told like that's, it's really hard, you know, and it feels like you can feel the resistance in your mind almost because you've been so used to just completing the task. Like, what do I need to get the A, you know? What yeah. is, what's the bare, what's the, what, I, what can I do to get the A? Right. Basically. I know. I, I think that's something that I've been really good at. It's like, no matter what the project, I always made it interesting for myself. Yeah, that's key. And regardless of what the teacher said, I'd butt heads with them sometimes. Yeah. And in the end, I produced good work and got an A+. Plus. So I was yeah. like, all right. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had similar successes myself. Um, yeah. And I think if you show... I've seen in almost every instance, if you show initiative and drive and that you're willing to do the work and do it on your own terms, but do it really well, I think you get right. a, um, a good teacher will recognize that. And yeah, I, yeah, I, I think something that the product design does really well, the program at the U of O. <laughs> the product design. Program, yeah, the product design. <laughs> no, um, what they do really well is kind of instill this uh, thinking of learning through your own research, right? That's what, yes, that's the nicest way I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> so taking the initiative yeah. to learn by yourself. Figure it out. Yeah. Or, Self-teach. Or die. Yeah. But, you know, because a lot of times you'll get thrown into these projects where you have, like, I have no skill background in this. Right. So you have to, like, just dive in head yeah. first. And so backpack. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I did exa- that's exactly, that's like, literally the reference I was going to bring up from yeah. my own experience was that, because that's the, what I had the least experience with was sewing. Mm-hmm. And then they were, like, because the term is so condensed, the backpack process that we, that we oh, did man. was so tight. It was a week, maybe, Dude. to do final yeah. build. week, two weeks. And then, yeah, two weeks total, I think, or three weeks, they say, to, like, f- concept of completion. And then, like, learning how to sew and doing a full-size backpack is, like, yeah. if it's, it seems oh, impossible. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, like, because you have to design, prototype, yeah. paper models, yeah. everything in yeah. two weeks. It's and everything like, takes, like, ten times longer than it would normally take because you're making so many mistakes, you know? Right. So and you don't know how the process is for yeah. soft goods. Like, right. it's a completely different process right. where it's, like, yeah. your traditional kind of gets inverted. Yeah, everything's inside out. <laughs> you have to sew everything inside out. Yeah. And backwards. I mean, and from the, like... Yeah, start from the... The end, the last sort thing of. You think about... Yeah. The it's last crazy. thing you think about is the first thing you have to do, so... Right. It's wild, man. Ah, so like... I know. And then in... But in that, you know, as much as it sucks, and it can be really terrifying and just so frustrating, I raged quit a couple of times. <laughs> uh, I had to just leave the house. But I sewed the bottom of my backpack on the top of my backpack, because w- my backpack was really a symmetrical tube, and it was, mm-hmm. re- like... Before it had a bottom on it, you know, it was real easy to confuse ah. the top and the bottom because of the way I designed it, which was not very, you know, it was very simple. But, and then I, I had this leather piece and I sewed it all on the bottom uh, and then I got it done and I was like, huh, why are those, uh, why are those buckles backwards? And then it all came crashing down around me. <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> uh, I had to go. Oh, thank for goodness. I was able to like really carefully remove right. the stitches. That, that's one of the beauties of sewing. You yes. can remove a stitch. Let's do it again. And yeah, it's like the undo button on a. Yeah. Except it takes like an hour. Yeah, with a seam, <laughs> a seam ripper, you know, really carefully. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, we. You know what? Uh, the interesting thing and the great part about all that is that on the other side of that discomfort and of, of that that frustration is usually um, a great deal of knowledge and experience that mm-hmm. you just can't uh, you can't uh, substitute. Right. You can't fabricate somehow. You no. Know? Yeah, and like taking failure as a lesson. It's huge. And a, yeah, like a learning experience to be able to redo it properly on the next one. Yeah, and I think coming up on failures is the most important thing a human being, I think, can do almost in yeah. the. It was one of the biggest lessons. If I took nothing else from going back to school in my mid 30s, it was, it was hitting a comfort zone problem or coming up, out, coming up against a barrier that I, I'd, up until that point, would never have taken the initiative to to push past hmm. you know and then like really hitting a quitting point for sure like hmm. this is close to the most i can take and <laughs> yeah right to- totally i mean there was time when i was ready to pack it up and go home like i, I can't this is not what i signed up for you yeah. know but then not doing that and then because usually i would probably i would hit a point and then you know just do something else right. um being forced to not do that or being deciding to stick it out and then come out the other side is was you know even in my 30s was like kind of a mind-blowing and revolutionary experience you mm. know and i think that's really important 
I think it taught me the value of fear and the value of like fatigue and what, how to recognize when you're in that space and then how to also see through the fog of your own discomfort Mm -hmm. into the potential sunshine of what's on the other side of that discomfort, if that makes any sense. Yeah, totally. But you can't see normally. And that's why it's so hard to do. Cause usually you're in the fog and you're like, ah, the only way I can see is the other way, which is behind me. And I'm going to go back out the way I came in because this shit is terrible. But if you have the foresight and the patience and the, and the resilience, I think to like just calm the fuck down and, and push through it, you know, what's that quote? I guess in the only way, if you're going through hell, keep going or something like that. Like that. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I think it's like <laughs> Winston Churchill or uh, FDR, or maybe Colonel Sanders. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going through, yes. Uh, how many spices are on the chickens? Mm. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's really uh, that is uh, an invaluable. Oh yeah. An invaluable um, realization. Right. Yeah. And as you know, problem solvers, we kind of get used to failing a lot, which right. means you get used to taking risks. Right. Which means more opportunities to success right right to succeed yeah Um, and you hear that a lot these days but i think it's it can't be said enough you know you hear this like fail often fail early fail you know which i think is easy to say but i think really understanding it um Mm -hmm. takes a little more yeah it's more like being comfortable with it i mean then it gets into like ego and like self-confidence and i mean it like it's a huge it's a it can be a potentially um Enormous. Look, yeah, it's a big t- subject. It's a big, subject. Yeah. Subject. So- <laughs> Sometimes it is a subject. You know? <laughs> if, uh, I've shed no- a couple of tears, um, yeah. you know, in times of, of extreme woe. Oh, man. Yeah, especially with like a week left and it's like what you've been working on just falls apart. Destroyed. Yeah. Oh. It's like, ah. What am I doing with my life? All right. Overdrive. <laughs> Let's get it done. Let's get yeah. it done. But struggling, struggles makes you stronger, Tail. Right. Yeah. What's well, a human condition? It makes it back, that's mm-hmm. back to like basic human survival i don't think right resilience and and adaptability um i think they're they come i think it, if humans didn't have so much struggle and didn't have to literally fight for survival i don't think mm-hmm. we wouldn't have become as strong enough to overcome the next challenge and it's just like this battle yeah. for dominance against yeah. a never-ending stream of threats you know mm-hmm. which is again a little bit more dramatic than it probably needs to get but, <laughs> um whatever man but yeah hey <laughs> Back to the uh, design process. Yeah. No, no, this is the design process. <laughs> yeah, it is. This yeah. is the design process. And so, yeah, the failing part is basically testing and prototype. Um, and then, you know, once you get to a good spot yeah. and you actually produce, like, a final prototype, right? you go into the implementation. And uh, What do you mean implementation? So I mean, it, I know what implementation means, but right. for the listener, what, how do you mean it? Basically, you know, creating that final product and – Sharing it with somebody who has no idea what it is mm-hmm. and see if they can figure it out. Like that's that kind of overlaps into testing too. Um, Cause you don't want to just like build something, launch it and think it's all good until right. somebody looks at it and you're like, how do you use this thing? And you like have to explain everything that you, yeah. Yeah. What your intentions were. But yeah. So unless you implement, you know, like once you've done all your testing, like even in like health or something, you figure out something that works. You have to implement it and stay consistent with it and make now that's like kind of a a bigger research. It's like now that it's done, hand it off to somebody else, observe again uh, and see what refinements that you can make, like continual reflection on uh, improvements that you can make. Right. It's Mm -hmm. like it's a never ending cycle. So once you implement it, you know, whether it's a backpack, try it on, use it for a few months. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, from there you'll notice certain problems that you face. Maybe some stitching is getting loose. Right. Um, and then strap width is not where you want right, it. It's not quite comfortable. Right. And then you go back to dry board trying to refine it. Right. Um, so it's, it's like a never ending cycle of improvement. Yeah. Um, but unless you implement it and actually like put it to use, yeah. you're never gonna know. Which, man, on a longer, on a deeper scale, also is is sort of how, and that's why we're doing this podcast. I think in the first, in the in the, uh, that's why we're so interested in this design process. I think is because mm-hmm. of how connected it is to life, and how connected mm-hmm. it is to development and human evolution. And I think about like the, the the sheer number of things humans have invented. You know, especially in the pre computer age, and how much testing had to go in, and how much trial and error. I mean, everything we we own was a was created, or everything that we've 
we enjoy essentially was created by that process by by finding a need finding a solution and then just keep refining it refining yeah. it tractors mm-hmm. early agriculture like all this stuff yeah. and nature too evolution nature, is yeah, a great huge. example of a right. design process that's it's, a good yeah yeah i mean it takes it's a very slow design process but it's one yeah. of those things where it's like every generation is slightly better than the previous. Right. And that's basically how, that's basically what design is. Yeah. And, uh, that's, a, know, that's heavy, man. That's heavy. Yeah. Oh man. That's so deep. So deep. Yeah. That's a whole other, that's a whole other podcast. Yeah. Design of nature. Right? And yeah, a lot of times, you know, people start to get, uh, stopped automatically. Oh, did you run out of space? I'm not sure. I don't either. I don't know. Oh, well, well, we can switch to the iPhones, right? <laughs> They're still running. Yeah, we can go back and forth. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're framed up in there. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, you're good. Okay, and still, it's still running, so. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. We, we, lost, our, we lost our wide shot. Uh-oh. That's all right. We're at 30 minutes. It's the first time. Yeah. Oh, on, the <laughs> on the dot. We hit 30 minutes. Uh, but. Uh, in, in eight seconds. Yeah. So that's how, that's what a 30-minute podcast duration sounds like or, we, fe- or feels like. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we don't have to stop. Oh, I was just letting yeah, you know. Keep going. Yeah. We, we just started hitting that. Hit the stride. Yeah. Hit the the deep conversation. I know. I yeah. I wonder. So that's we have to decide like how far we do we take it. Do we do we keep talking or do we like shelve it and then get right. back into it later? How long do we want the podcast to be? I like thirty minutes. I think thirty yeah. minutes is a great time frame. Um, a mm. it gives us it condenses our it gives us a, a finite number of of time. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's that's good. That's a good finite sense. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it gives us a limited amount of time, which then forces us to condense our conversations and refine our ideas. And it also limits the um, the burden on our busy schedules too. It gives us time for a half an hour prior, half an hour podcast, half an hour wrap up. But I th- you know, I don't I don't like rigid I don't like rigid anything. Yeah. I like flexible yeah, plans that it, can be changed. Right. I mean like yeah, a lot of podcasts that I listen to, it's usually close to an hour. Yeah. Um and I, I usually listen to pack, podcasts when I'm podcast, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a yeah. podcast when I'm like doing other stuff. Right. So it's like time is not really a factor, right? Um, yeah, it's passive, right? Yes, and of of course, having a long one is definitely. I mean, all the podcasts I listen to too are are definitely longer. I mean, some is upwards of like three hours. But Whoa. I didn't want to. Like, <laughs> that's a long time, you know. Like yeah. we have that stuff to do. Um, I only have, yeah. It's I don't know. I'm I, I don't I'm I am open to to recording as long as we feel like we're having a good conversation and mm-hmm. you know we're still running this. I think it might be good to wrap it soon here and just listen back to some of this True. before we go any further just because I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this is the first time. Everything sounds good. I'm, th- I'm seeing only like left and right channel. It is recording, right? It's recording. <laughs> it's recording. But... But I don't know how, what the... I don't know what the eventual result will be. But we can right. listen back to it whenever you want, so... Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess um, let's wrap it up. You are? Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, every. Mu- yeah, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit that out. <laughs> Thank you, every much. Thank you, every much. Uh, thanks, everyone, uh, for listening. If you are listening, uh, and we will be back with more interesting conversations and insights on the topic of design and how it applies to your life real soon. All right, have a good one. So yeah, so this camera for some reason stopped recording at like minute twenty ish, and we went uh, to a thirty minute recording on the audio. So it's one of those things, you know, we have to figure out. Never recorded anything that long on this thing. So, right. yeah, it's just one of those things. Encounter a problem and solve it, right? <laughs> <laughs> but so far, so good. The podcast going to be pretty sweet. Totally. I think, especially for the first one. Totally. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. We had a good content there. It's listenable, I think, which is like the best. That's what I yeah. was shooting for. It's, and yeah, listenable. engaging, entertaining. So hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't sound yeah <laughs> hopefully people have value yeah you to, tell uh, us how about that yeah you tell us and uh comment below of everything the good the bad the ugly Yeesh. yeah yeah so we want to hear the negative feedback to improve ourselves right that's right don't take things personally no <laughs> yikes <laughs> yeah